Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Imani Larusa, and I'm gonna teach you how to make this. And we're only gonna be using basic 3D tools in After Effects, so let's go. So we're gonna use Adobe After Effects and Photoshop for this tutorial, just because it's a lot easier to cut out the mountains in Photoshop than it is in After Effects. I grabbed a few images online of some mountains, and I'm just gonna cut out the background in all of those. A great tool that Photoshop has that After Effects doesn't have is the Quick Selection tool. This is how we're gonna be able to cut out these mountains very easily. Also, you need to make sure that you have multiple images of mountains because we're gonna need to put them on different dimensions in the 3D space that we work in. We're gonna need a background, a foreground, and a midground. The great thing about the Quick Selection tool is like it's almost like a paintbrush, and when you paint over things, you could cut them out using a paintbrush. And what's cool is that it tries to calculate and find the edges that it thinks that you're trying to cut out, which will save you time. To make your brush size bigger on your quick selection tool, hit your left and right bracket. And I'm gonna grab this foreground stuff. So see how it kinda just is grabbing everything near it? Say like in this instance where it grabs something that I didn't necessarily want, I could just go in and take it out with the alt click. So you just hit Alt on your keyboard and then drag over it. And a little minus icon will show up in the middle of your brush. So the next thing you do is you wanna see how your mask is gonna look like before you actually cut it out. We're gonna go up to Select and Mask and the side options are gonna show up. Smooth, Feather, Contrast, and Shift Edge. No matter what I'm masking, I'm always using Smooth and Shift Edge and a little bit of contrast. But because we're working with mountains, which are pretty rigid, we're not gonna mess with the smooth. I am gonna bump up a little bit of the contrast and the Shift Edge, it's basically going to decrease or increase the size of the mask. And then once that's all good, you go to this little mask thing. It looks like a little piece of paper with a circle in it. So another great thing I liked in this image are these trees. So I'm just gonna drop this image back in and I'm gonna take these trees out. Grabbing objects like this tree that has a lot of textures and colors and just a whole bunch of detail, it's gonna be a little trickier with the quick selection tool. So I'm gonna show you the way that I do it, which I think is pretty effective and pretty easy to do. So I'm gonna show you my two most useful tools when I'm using the quick selection tool, and that is Grow and Similar. It's under your select bar. So I brought this image in that has a whole bunch of different colors and shapes, and we're gonna use this quick selection tool to grab these little bits without actually having to individually grab each one. So I have this big white orb in the middle and I'm just going to select a little bit of that orb. So grow out to grab them. And then boom, now I have a perfect circle. What similar does is say I just wanted like these little pink shapes in here. I don't wanna go in and individually grab each and every single freaking one. So I'm gonna to go to similar and what this does, it's gonna grab all of the similar colored pixels that I originally selected. So now boom, all of the pink ones are selected throughout my entire image. And if I wanted to expand it a little more, I can hit grow and it expands it a little more. And we're gonna use the same selection tools to grab these trees without grabbing all of these rocks and crap behind it. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of these colors and the textures in here and then I'm gonna hit similar. So now you can see all the green, all the same textures that were similar that were grabbed in that calculation. I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast, take a little bag. Okay, and I'm gonna cut it out. So it may seem a little daunting, but it's actually really easy to take out. So you see these little, uh, this black and white version of this picture. The black means that it is no more. There's nothing there. And the white means that that's what's being shown. What I wanna do is I wanna paint over this image and tell Photoshop that I want all of this to be black and all of this to be black so that the only thing left white 
are these trees. Select your paintbrush tool. And since this is just a big chunk, I'm just gonna take all of this out. Because I don't need any of it. I just want these little bit of trees. So look, you're already like halfway done, more than halfway done, and it took you like two seconds to do. And that's what I did on my image. So I'll let you guys do that, but let's move forward and now bring all of our images into After Effects. I'm going to create a new composition, a 1920 by 1080, 23.97 frames per second. Um, and I'm make it 10 seconds and I'm going to label this logo animation. So what I need is a foreground, a background and my sky. So I'll just go to icons so I could see them. Okay. I want my sky. I want my photoshopped mountain. I'm going to import this one separately because I need to grab the layer separately. So I'm just going to import these two and then hit file, import, and then import this one as footage. And then it's going to give me an option and it's saying, would you like this footage, this Photoshop file to be merged together and not have the layer separated? or would you like to individually choose what layer you want? I'm going to pick this one and just bring them in separately because I only have two layers, but say I had like 25 layers. I don't want to bring in every single one individually because I need to work with them. I'm going to go to composition, retain layer size. And what this does is it just makes a composition of what your Photoshop layers look like. So all the layers would be separately and in order. Um, but definitely use that a lot of layers, but because we only have two, let's just bring them in separately and not have to worry about it. Document size. Okay. I'm going to import this first one, which are the trees. And then I'm just going to import the second one. Cool. I'm going to bring this in and just scale it down. So I'm just going to throw this in the background, make it smaller. Please make sure to label your layers. It's just going to save you a whole bunch of time. So this one is the foreground. And I'm using this solo button to only see to solo it out trees and mountains. And then sky. So we also have clouds too. So let me bring those in. Go to file, import. So let's throw this down on here and label this clouds. I'm just going to turn that off for the time being. And the fun part, we're going to make it all 3D. So click on this 3D box and you could just click on one and then just slide up on the rest of the layers that you want it on. So all of my layers are 3D, but they don't really look very much 3D. There's no dimension and it's because they're on the same plane. They're on the same Z axis. So once you have a 3D layer, you will be given these X, Y, and Z axis. So Y is up and down and you can always tell because of the way that the arrow is pointing. So the arrow is pointing up. So Y is up and down. X is left and right. And then Z is back and forth. Here, let me slow that out. Is back and forth. Next, I'm going to create a camera. And this camera can only be used when you have 3D layers in your composition. 
So I'm gonna click camera. Keep all of these settings the same. I normally pick 50 millimeter. And for this in particular tutorial, we're not gonna enable the depth of field, but you could definitely get a lot of cool things when you start messing with depth of field. So I'm just gonna keep these all the same. Unsolo this. What you're gonna notice that's different about the transform settings from a 2D layer to a 3D layer is the orientation and the X, Y, and Z rotation. I wanna track in 3D space. So I want it to start at this position and then move into Z space. So we're gonna be moving forward. So I'm just gonna push in and move forward. I'll turn the, if your computer is like running slow because you have a lot of 3D layers, just turn the resolution down with this little uh, resolution button. Um, full, half resolution, a third of resolution or a quarter resolution. I'll just do third for the time being. So as you can see, it doesn't really look that 3D. There's not a lot of dimension. What we need to do is put these images in the Z axis. A great tool are these camera views. So this is one view, next is two. So now I could see this is my active camera and this just changed to my top camera. And you could change this to left and it'll change the point of view to the left. You could change it to back. Um, but typically for something like this, I always wanna look at the top so I could see where my layers lay in my 3D space. So just like normal life, the sky is super far out there. So I'm going to take the Z axis on this sky and I'm going to move it all the way back in Z space. And because it got smaller, because it got moved back, I'm just gonna scale it up. Okay, next are my mountains. That's the second for this thing in this piece. So I'm just gonna move this back in Z space and I'm going to move it over like the original. And I'm actually, what I did was I used this image twice and then I'm gonna duplicate it and just bring it over here. I'm just gonna push this back just a tiny bit so that it's behind this layer in 3D space. But this has a sharp edge on it too. So I'm just going to go in and just cut it out using the pen tool. Hit G, just kind of create a rough looking mountain. And then I'm gonna mask that out by hitting subtract. So now, it looks like these set of mountains are behind these mountains. Next is the trees. I'm just going to kind of move them within the middle and then scale up. And I'm gonna turn these clouds on. And I'm just gonna grab like a few of these. I don't need all of them. So Okay, cool. So now that I have all my clouds cut out, I'm just gonna take out the black with a simple blending mode, and this is called screen. Um, so what this does, it just takes out the darker pixels in your image or in your layer. So I'm gonna hit screen and boom, it's gone. So I am going to spread out these And then I'm gonna scale it up. So you could see that it's not scaling where I want it to, and that's because my anchor point is set right here. If I move, everything is going to move from that point. I don't really want it to scale up from that point. I want it to scale up directly in the middle of that layer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna grab, I'm gonna hit Y, it's a hotkey for the anchor point. It's also up here next to the camera. And I'm just gonna drag it over to the middle 
so that now when I hit scale, it scales from the middle instead of all the way off to the side. I'm gonna do the same thing for all the other ones. Okay, I'm gonna move this cloud on a different dimension. So I'm actually just gonna move this forward in the Z axis so that it's like kind of more in our face. Keep it in front of this mountain. Okay, cool. So this is basically the effect that we're trying to achieve. Now we're just gonna get into adding a little bit of more detail just to finalize everything. So like in my last tutorial, I emphasized how important it is to add physics and motion into your keyframes. So I'm just going to go to keyframe assist, hit easy ease. Cool. So now it's time for our logo. So I grabbed this just because I really like the font on it and it fits our theme. So obviously we don't want the white behind the logo. So we're just gonna simply take that out with this Luma key. Go to your effects and presets. If you don't see effects and presets, go to your window and it should be right here. If it's clicked, then it's there. Um, but make sure that it's clicked. Go to Luma key. This is going to use the lights and the darks to key out something. and keen is basically like taking out like when you use green screen that's called keen so instead of keying out the darker pixels i'm going to key out the brighter pixels and then i'm going to turn up this tolerance a little and then i'm just going to do this till it kind of smooths out the edges on it and if it seems a little pixelated, remember that you are in like a lower resolution if this is selected. If it's in full, then that's what it's gonna look like. I'm just gonna go over to fill and effects and presets. And this effect changes your layer to any color that you want. Um, it just, it's a color overlay the same way that it is in Photoshop. So I want to turn this white, like the original. And then don't forget to make sure that it's in 3D. So now it is in 3D space. I think I'm just gonna bring it forward a little and then scale it down. So look at that, it's in 3D space. I hope that video was useful. Um, I just kind of wanted to explain a little on how and why things work in After Effects rather than just showing you because I, I personally learned better that way. So I hope you guys like it. Um, if you do, subscribe or follow me on the social medias. I would super appreciate it. Thank you so much and have like a super awesome day.